Welcome to the Human Resource Liaison Guide. The Department of Health and Hospitals recruitment process is designed to enable each section to select the best possible candidate for their vacancy. Filling vacancies shall be directed towards attracting and retaining highly qualified people, utilizing an employee skills, capabilities, and education in the best interest of the department. After reviewing this video, you will understand the procedure used by the Human Resources Recruitment Section to fill vacancies with different types of appointments, what documents are needed, where to find them, how to complete them, and what steps are taken before the hire. You have the option to pause or go back to a portion of the video at any time to fully complete each document. This table of contents is being provided as a quick reference during future viewings. Within your role as a human resource liaison, you may hear several abbreviations. This list defines each abbreviation used throughout this video. Now let's begin. In order to properly begin the hire process, you will need access to several reports in the ISIS system. If you are also the timekeeper for your section, you may already have security to run ISIS reports. If not, your supervisor is required to obtain written authorization from your section's appointing authority on your behalf. A written request must be forwarded to the training section of Human Resources in order to obtain proper security access for you. If you have any issues with obtaining access, you may contact your Human Resources Department at 225 Three four two six four seven seven. The two reports that will provide you with the needed information are the ZP-115 and the ZP-19 reports. The ZP-115 report will provide you with information about one specific position. This report will be your main source of information when completing the top portion of the HR2. In order to run this report, you will need to know the position number belonging to the position you want to fill and your personnel area number. A sample ZP-115 is shown on the screen. This is the report you will need to print in order to properly complete the HR2. The ZP-19 report will provide you with information about all the positions in your area of responsibility or call center. You can use this report to see which positions are vacant and who occupies the positions that are filled. In order to run this report, you will enter your personnel area number and the call center that you have access to. Due to the sensitive information in this report, a sample is not provided on the screen. For any position-related questions, contact the Compensation section of Human Resources. Now that you have printed your ZP-115 report, you are ready to move on. In order to fill vacancies within your office, you must first complete and forward to your Human Resource Office a request to fill a vacant position form, which is known as the HR2. The HR2 form can be found on the DHH SharePoint site by typing DHHNet in the Internet browser. Next. Click on Human Resource under Employee Resources. You will find HR Forms under Libraries. Next, click on the HR2 form. Here you will find not only the HR2, but also other HR forms, which will be explained in the Operations video for Liaisons. 
Once the form is open, perform a file save as function in order to save the document to your personal computer. Do not type in the form before saving it to your computer. As the information you type may overwrite the blank file in our database. Please check back often as our forms are updated periodically. Now that you have located the form, let's discuss how to complete it. In Section 1, please fill in the agency personnel area number, call center number, call center title, domicile, former incumbent's name if applicable, number of vacancies, job title, job code, and position number. Most of the information you will need to complete this part of the document can be found on the ZP-115 position form. Please verify all information, especially the work parish, on the ZP-115. If the information is incorrect, please contact your HR compensation section to correct the information before submitting the HR2. The sample ZP-115 on the screen has been highlighted with the information you will need to complete Section 1 of the HR-2. Note, the official domicile shall be the work parish in which the office is located. If a person is located in the field, the official domicile shall be the city nearest to the area where the majority of the work is performed or as designated by the department head. Also, the job title should be listed as the official civil service job title as indicated on the ZP-115. You will hear the terms funded and unfunded often when you are preparing hiring paperwork. The funding types of most positions have the flexibility to change depending on the employment status of the person occupying the position. In order to identify the funding status of your vacancy, Look next to the personnel sub-area on your ZP-115 report. The sample on the screen has been highlighted for you. This entry will end in either 2100 or 2200. A vacant 2100 position can be filled as probational, promotional, or by a detail. A vacant 2200 position can only be filled as job appointment or WAE appointment. With this in mind, look at Section 2 of the HR2. If the position being announced is currently vacant and unfunded and you plan to fill it as probational, promotional, or by detail, you must locate a funded vacancy to swap with. If this applies, please fill in the highlighted areas of the HR2 form with the funded vacancy information. You may solicit the assistance of your supervisor, budget officer, and or HR manager regarding any questions related to the funding. If the job duties will require a specific skill set, place a brief explanation in the Experience Preferred column. Preference must be clearly and concisely stated. An example of when it is appropriate to use preferred qualifications are when incumbents of specific positions must possess a special skill such as speaking a foreign language or sign language or when incumbents of specific positions must have experience working with children or individuals with behavioral special needs. Your hiring manager will inform you if the position has preferred experience that is not already included in the civil service minimum qualifications. Minimum qualifications for most job titles can be found on the civil service website. Under the Quick Link section, you will see Job Information and Test Finder. In addition to experience, some jobs may require the applicant to have a license. This license may be a civil service qualification requirement for that job title, or it may be a preferred request because of the functions performed at that job site. If any type of job-related license is needed, Please answer yes to this question and identify the title of that license. These details will be provided in the job posting. 
Moving along to the posting questions section of the form. A career progression group, or CPG, is a list of two or more job titles that have been banned into a defined group, typically within the same job family or series. This series may be used to hire and reallocate employees for recruiting, training, and retention purposes. If the position being posted participates in a CPG, please list under the posting questions the levels in which the agency would like the vacancy to be announced. Otherwise, we will post the position at the current level. You have two options to identify whether or not a position participates in a CPG. First, run your ISIS ZP19 report and look for a Y in the CPG indicator column as shown in the sample above. Second, when using the ZP115 report, look in the Relationships section and find the line labeled Career Progression Group. This will tell you the highest level of the position in the CPG. However, if the report does not have a line labeled Career Progression Group, this usually means that the position does not participate in a CPG. In the How Do You Want to Fill This Vacancy section, you will need to check all that apply. This will tell HR which appointment type or types the agency wants to consider in order to fill this vacancy. But before you begin to mark these boxes, let's examine what each of these appointment types mean. The first appointment type listed is probational. According to Civil Service Rules for Probational Appointments, the selected candidate must serve a probationary period, which is a working test period, lasting 6 to 24 months. DHH's policy for probationary periods is normally 12 months. Once this time period has passed, the supervisor has two options. Extend the probational time period up to a total of 24 months or change the employee's status from probational to permanent. Keep in mind that during the probationary period, an employee may be terminated at any time. If this description applies, mark the box next to probational. Remember, this option will allow for candidates to be hired in your position as probation only. For example, if the candidate you select is permanent and probational is the only box you are marked, that candidate must lose their permanent status and accept a new probational appointment in order to be hired. You may refer to Civil Service Rules 1.26, 9.1, and 23.3 on the Civil Service website. Next is Job Appointment. A job appointment is a non-permanent appointment of an employee to fill a position in a classified service for a limited period of time. An appointing authority may use a job appointment to fill a position for a period not to exceed four years. The employee may be terminated prior to the completion of the allocated period for any reason. If a job appointment is needed for a longer period of time, for rational business reasons, the appointing authority may request approval from the Civil Service Commission. You may refer to Civil Service Rules 1.18 and 23.5 on the Civil Service website. Many sections who do not currently have permanent funding fill positions by job appointment rather than probational. If this description applies, mark the box next to job appointment. Remember, this option will allow for candidates to be hired in your position as job appointment only. For example, if the candidate you select is permanent and job appointment is the only box you have marked, that candidate must lose their permanent status and accept a new job appointment in order to be hired. Moving on to unclassified appointments. Positions that are designated as unclassified by the state constitution are not subject to the hiring and compensation standards set by state civil service, although they may have qualification requirements and pay limits set by state statutes. 
If your section has a vacant unclassified position to be announced, mark the box next to unclassified. In order to identify if there are any unclassified positions in your call center, run your ISIS ZP19 report and look for text beginning with unclass in the ESG text column as shown in the sample above. According to Civil Service Rule 23.6, a WA appointment is a temporary appointment of an employee to fill a position for a limited period of time in order to address filling the position in a regular manner or to address an emergency or a work overload situation. An appointing authority may use a WAE appointment to fill a position when the hours work will not exceed 1,245 hours during a 12-month period. The appointing authority may terminate the WAE appointment at any time. If your section has a vacant WAE position to be announced, mark the box next to WAE appointment. In order to identify if there are any WAE positions in your call center, run your ISIS ZP19 report and look for text beginning with WAE in the PSA text column as shown in the sample above. Now that the definition of each appointment type has been explained, let's discuss what job types must be posted. According to Civil Service Rule 22.3a, all vacancies for jobs in the classified service that are filled by probational appointment, job appointment, or promotion shall be posted on the internet in accordance with the director's policies and procedures, except as provided in Rule 22.3b. Rule 22.3b lists 12 exceptions. Five of the most popular exceptions are listed on the screen. For the entire list of exceptions, please refer to the civil service web address shown above. If your office is considering hiring a candidate that is covered by one of the civil service exclusions, stop completing this form and contact your supervisor or your assigned HR manager for further instructions. Otherwise, mark yes in the box to the right of post to LA careers. Various civil service rules are noted as expanded reference information. Next is the promotional area of the HR2 form. Civil Service Rule 23.4 states that promotions shall only be made of employees serving with permanent status in the classified service. Employees whose most recent official overall performance evaluation is needs improvement or unsuccessful are not eligible for promotion. If your section would like to allow current permanent employees the option to be considered for this opening, receive the assigned promotional pay and retain their permanent status, mark the box to the left of promotional. The agency may limit the posting to certain groups of people or zones. These are as follows. Personnel area, which will include any permanent employee in the personnel area where the position exists. Some example personnel areas are OS, MVA, OPH, OBH, and etc. Next is DHH, which will include any permanent employee in the entire agency of DHH. Or it can be listed as statewide. Statewide will include any permanent employee in the entire state. Promotion zones have been established to allow agencies flexibility in determining the appropriate applicant pool when filling different vacancies. For example, to attract applicants familiar with certain agency policies and procedures or certain types of work experience, or on the contrary, to expand a promotional opportunity to all classified permanent state employees. When opting to limit your posting to promotional only, you will mark one of the promotional zone options as a companion. Now we will discuss the detail area of the form. Civil Service Rule 1.13.1 1 
defines a detailed to special duty as a temporary assignment of an employee to perform the duties and responsibilities of a position other than one to which he is regularly assigned, without prejudice to his rights in and to his regular position. A detail shall not exceed one year without civil service approval. An appointing authority may end a detail at any time. For various reasons, a section may want to fill a vacancy on a temporary basis. You will mark the box to the left of detail if the appointing authority wants to fill a vacancy by detail and would like it announced. Notes: If the appointing authority already knows who will be placed on detail, completion of this form is not required. As with promotions, there are similar zones you can limit your announcement. The two zones for details are Personnel Area and DHH. For practical business purposes, details are not generally offered statewide. Please mark one of the given zones as a companion to the detail choice. You may refer to Civil Service Rules 1.13.1 and 23.12 on the Civil Service website. In addition to typing in the Civil Service Rule web link referenced on several other slides, you may also access the Civil Service Rules by going to www.civilservice.louisiana.gov and clicking on SCS Rules. In the last section of the HR2, you must provide the hiring manager and personnel liaison's names, phone numbers, and the email addresses. Next, obtain the appointing authority signature and date before forwarding the document to your agency's budget staff. Upon the issuance of an executive order and memorandum from the undersecretary during a hiring freeze, a hiring freeze exemption form is required in conjunction with the HR2 for complete approval to fill a vacancy. All HR2s for the Office of Public Health must be submitted with a completed OPH request to fill promote form as a companion. Once an HR2 is submitted to your HR office, the Department Preferred Reemployment List, which is commonly called DPRL, will be checked. The DPRL is a list of names of permanent employees who have been laid off or moved to a vacancy created as a result of a layoff. Employees on such a list shall be given preferential hiring rights for their department or agency. If a DPRL is discovered, Instructions will be forwarded to the personnel liaison and or hiring manager along with the attachment A form via email. The liaison and or hiring manager must contact the people on the list starting from the top down in order in which they appear. If the person did not answer and the message was left, 24 hours must be given for their response before contacting the next person on the list. You may refer to the civil service website to review the rules shown. If you choose to make offers in person, by telephone, or by email, you must document your contacts and the results of your offer. You may do this by noting your contacts directly on the attachment A form. When an employee accepts an offer, he or she must be able to report for work within 14 days. An employee who is unable to report for work within 14 days may be considered unavailable and the vacancy may be offered to the next employee on the list. Each completed contact form must be promptly submitted to your Human Resources Office for Civil Service compliance purposes. Once the DPRL is cleared or no results are found, you will receive the HR2 email notification informing you that the position has been posted and will include the job title, call center number, position number, location of the vacancy, type of appointment, and the closing date of the announcement. You should review this information as well as the actual posting and notify your HR analyst if there are any discrepancies. A referral list is a list of applicants that civil service has certified as meeting the minimum qualifications. After the posting closes, you will receive a referral list email. This email will include each candidate's application, the referral list, the expiration date of the referral list, and an overview of the remaining steps of the hiring process. After the list is reviewed,
you may proceed with your in-house interview process. You must complete the referral list on every candidate that was interviewed by indicating the interview date, the action, and the hire date. The referral list email you will receive will inform you of the action codes. For example, once a candidate is appointed, you will put an A under the action column by the name of the appointed applicant. I for interviewed, C for considered, D equals declined. Once someone is selected for the position, an email must be sent to your HR analyst requesting a conditional offer of employment form, which is known as a COE or the HR5. The COE request email should list the following information, name of the applicant, position number, title, and the effective date of the hire. After the HR analyst receives the requested email, the COE will be issued. Now you may seek a salary higher than the minimum hire rate, special interest rate if applicable, or rate due to project service. Chapter 6 of the Civil Service Pay Rules allows for applicants to start at a higher pay rate due to qualifications or credentials higher than the minimum qualifications. The pay rule is commonly called a 6.5G. Consult with an HR analyst in the compensation section for guidance and advice. The 6.5G form should be requested prior to the COE request. The analyst will send you an email with the COE, I-9 form, and I-9 poster attached. This email will state whether the applicant requires additional documents to certify their minimum qualification and credentials. For example, an official college transcript or an unexpired license. There are two versions of transcript delivery that will be considered official. Number one is an electronic transcript email from the school directly to the HR analyst. The second option is the official paper copy delivered to an analyst in a sealed envelope by mail or by hand. When you call the chosen candidate to offer them the job and schedule a date for them to come into the office, you should remind them to bring with them their social security card for their personnel file, one document from list A or list B of the I-9 form, and any minimum qualification documents if applicable. The next few slides will go into more detail about the employee and employer requirements for each item. First is the HR5 or COE. It is the offer of employment in which certain conditions must be met by the applicant prior to hire. DHH conditions are listed on the HR5 form. Upon receipt of the form from HR, you will review for errors prior to giving it to the applicant. The prospective employee must circle if he or she is authorized to work in the U.S. Initial lines 1 through 10 in agreement, sign and date the form, for clarity purposes, it is highly suggested that you read over each item of the form with the candidate as he or she initials and signs. If number one is ever answered with a no, human resources must be notified immediately. A hire of someone not authorized to work indefinitely in the United States must be approved by the DHA secretary before they can begin working. Item number two. If the candidate is required to have additional documentation to meet the minimum qualifications, a college transcript for example, this is another opportunity to emphasize that such documents must be submitted before the first day of work. Before returning to human resources, please make sure the form is completed by checking to see if all lines are initialed, make sure yes or no is circled, and obtain both signatures from the employee as well as the designated representative prior to the hire date. Lastly, if the vacancy is at pay levels AS623, TS318, SS422, or MS525 or above, an executive approval letter must be submitted to the HR director and must be approved before a COE will be issued please contact your section's HR director for further information regarding the process of submitting the requested approval letter. The next documents to be given to the candidate or the I-9 Employment Eligibility Verification Form and the Federal I-9 E-Verify Poster in their prospective language. 
This form is a federal mandated form to determine employment eligibility. Each of these documents, along with the posters, are required to be given to every new employee. The I-9 form is a nine-page document. Pages 1 through 6 is information or instructions about the I-9 process. Right now, I will point out page 7 and go over the instructions on how this page should be completed by the applicant. Section 1. Employee Information and Attestation. Have the applicant print their information in all the highlighted areas. Please be reminded that the applicant's legal name must be used on this form. Next, notice the statement, I attest on the penalty of perjury that I am. Have the candidate check the box that applies to them. The options are a citizen of the United States, a non-citizen national of the United States, for example, persons born in America Samoa and children of non-citizen nationals born abroad, a lawful permanent resident. A lawful permanent resident is any person who is not a U.S. citizen and who resides in the United States under legally recognized and lawfully recorded permanent residence as an immigrant, an alien authorized to work. If you are a not a citizen or national of the United States or a lawful permanent resident but are authorized to work in the U.S., check this box. Please refer to page 2 of the I-9 for further information. Lastly, have the candidate sign and date the form. The preparer and our translator certification information may be completed if it applies. On page 9 of the form, there is a list of acceptable documents. The applicant should have brought in their social security card as requested to sign their COE. They will need to provide another form of unexpired identification to satisfy the requirements of this form. You will need to make clear copies of these documents and submit to Human Resources with a completed page 7 of this document. The driver's license is usually the standard document that applicants will bring in, but any listed document is acceptable. If drug testing is required, the drug screening form with a list of drug testing sites will be given to the candidate when they come to sign the COE. Before giving the form to the candidate, use the social security card that was brought in to write his or her name and social security number on the form and mark the box next to pre-employment. Those areas have been highlighted on the sample shown on the screen. Make a copy of the front page of the form to submit to Human Resources. The applicant has 24 hours from the time of being given this form to report to a drug testing site. When the applicant goes to the clinic, he or she will need to provide the clinic with the drug screening form and his or her driver's license. The applicant cannot start working until negative drug screening results have been received as stated in item number 7 of the COE. Contact your HR analyst for the drug testing results. Let's review the items you need to return to HR before the applicant's first day of work. The signed referral list, a properly completed COE, an official transcript or licensure if this applies, page 7 of the I-9 form, a copy of the applicant's social security card, a copy of one other unexpired verification document listed on page 9 of the I-9 form, and a photocopy of the pre-filled drug testing form given to the applicant if it applies. HR can only accept two versions of an official transcript. An e-script, which is an electronic transcript email to a HR analyst's email address, or a transcript mailed to HR from the applicant's school in a sealed envelope. If you run into an issue with returning any of the items on the checklist, please notify your HR analyst immediately. Once you have forwarded the required documents to HR, an orientation link email will be sent to you and the applicant to confirm receipt of documents and instruct how to begin the orientation process. 
A personnel number will not be issued until all documents presented in this video and the series of orientation documents presented in their assigned videos are returned to the HR analyst. A personnel number is required for training an employee to receive a paycheck. If you have any questions, contact our HR office at area code 225-342-6477. Six four seven seven, and as always, we hope this information was clear and helpful.